Mr. Hamill and turn to page 469. 469. And we're going to sing Revive Us Again. If you will stand. Thank you very much. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. The Lord, it's good to see everybody in the Lord's house on this day. Amen. Amen. It is good to be here, sister. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Even though we are still, I guess, kind of dealing with this uh, what to do syndrome uh, with this um, COVID virus and, and the news and uh, all of this stuff, but uh, we're just going to continue to leave it in the Lord's hands. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to continue what we're doing here uh, at West Franklin. Uh, we will continue to uh, practice uh, common sense. Uh, we have san hand sanitizer in the vestibule, and, and we will refrain from shaking hands and hugging if, if, if you feel like it. I mean, there, we, we have no law here other than the law of Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, uh, again, we're just going to go on and see what the Lord has for us. Um, again, welcome uh, to the house of the Lord this morning. I want to, by the way of announcements, I'm excited. Uh, we went out uh, Thursday night. Uh, several of us met here at the church, and uh, we got the opportunity. Some stayed and, and wrapped Bibles for the prison ministry, and I so appreciate that. We appreciate that. And uh, some of us went out uh, in the church van, out into the community. And um, I, uh, Candy, I know you didn't know I was going to do this, but there was a young lady by the name of Tiffany that got saved Amen. as Candy and Miss Linda approached her to witness to her over at uh, the Rotary Pavilion. Uh, and Miss Candy, you mentioned something that she said uh, she had always in the past had someone to pray for her. And uh, Candy, can you tell us a little bit about just quickly what happened there? Yes. Yes, amen. That's good. <coughs> yes. 
this. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, that, that uh, feel better already experience, it comes along with being born again. Right. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we, we run into another gentleman uh, by the name of Michael uh, that was struggling with alcohol and also struggling with, um, he had traveled all over the United States and uh, been exposed to many of the world religions, uh, Buddhism, so on and so forth. And uh, we shared the love of Christ with him. So pray for Tiffany and Michael. But the I guess the, the point of, of letting us know is that we designated one hour, one hour of our time, when one hour someone come to the Lord. So praise the Lord. The Lord's not through yet. Amen. Any other announcements? Any other announcements this morning? Yes. Bless her heart. Yes, yes. Let's pray and continue to remember Miss Jenny and others. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Any other announcements or any? Yes, yes, absolutely. All right. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you this morning for the opportunity to come into your house once again. Lord, I was glad when they said, let us come into the house of the Lord. Lord, this is not just a, a routine for me. This is not just an, an insignificant thing that I do. It's not an inconvenience for me, Lord, to come into your house. Lord, it is a privilege and an honor, Lord, to be able to call upon you and to be able to worship you. Lord, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're doing. And Lord, I pray, Lord, for all the requests, Lord, that's been made known, Lord, those that were spoken. Lord, those that are unspoken. Lord, you know the need that we have. Lord, you know the need that this country has. Lord, you know the need that this nation has. And Lord, I thank you for, Lord, being able to call upon you, Lord, to be able to accept, Lord, help that comes from above. Lord, we do truly need help from above. Lord, we need, Lord, your spirit and your divine presence, Lord, and a divine moving, Lord, in and amongst, Lord, this land. Lord, protect, Lord, our uh, people. Lord, protect our police officers and our first responders. Lord, give, Lord, that, that the enemy has tried to take. Lord, allow us, Lord, through your spirit, Lord, to take back what the devil has tried to kill, steal, and destroy. And Lord, we praise you. Lord, you are the author, Lord, of eternal life. You are the author of all that is good. And Lord, we praise you for that. Lord, we love you this morning. Lord, let us cast our care upon you this morning. Lord, we, we don't have a whole lot of confidence, Lord, in man. Lord, for man is always weak. Man always fails. Man always comes up short. Lord, but you don't. You always do what you say you'll do. You always prove yourself, Lord. Your word continues to prove itself over and over and over again. Lord, you truly are the God that changeth not. Lord, I pray that you will bless this church. Lord, bless each family, Lord, that's represented here in this church today. Lord, you know what we need. Lord, and we truly do need a word from God. Lord, we need a word from above. Lord, and I pray, Lord, that you will help us in that. 
Lord, bless all the other churches, Lord, this morning that are attempting to have service, whether inside or outside or whatever the case. Maybe it's by social media, whatever the case. Lord, let yourself be exalted, Lord, for we lift you up. Lord, we're waiting on for you to lift us up, Lord, to that higher plane. Lord, we love you and thank you this morning. Thank you for what you've done this past week. Thank you for the answered prayers. Thank you for the mercy and the grace, Lord, that you've bestowed upon us. Lord, now, lastly, Lord, Lord, I pray, Lord, this morning, Lord, if there's anything in our hearts and anything in our minds that would, that would stay off the sweet spirit of God, God, I'll be the first to ask, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I repent before you. Lord, forgive me, Lord, of myself, Lord, and my ways at times, Lord. Lord, forgive me, Lord, that I may call upon you, Lord, and feel your touch and feel your presence in this day. Lord, I love you this morning. Lord, I love you, Lord, but you love me first, and I thank you for that. Lord, bless us today. Lord, bless the musicians, Lord, as they play. Lord, bless uh, the singer as they come in a few moments, Lord, and last but not least, Lord, bless your word, Lord, which I know you will. And all these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. We're going to go ahead and move on now to our uh, tithes and offerings. Um, I'm going to ask Brother George if you'll stand and, and bless the tithes and offerings. You can come down and, and bring your gifts as, as we've been doing. Yes. Amen. Amen. Bring your tithes and offerings down, if you will. Yes, sir. Crisis Pregnancy Center. Don't forget about that. All right.
I'm going to ask uh, Zoe to come sing for us this morning. Zoe, you come on. Uh, Wednesday night, um, we had a, a wonderful, wonderful service on uh, Wednesday night uh, prayer meeting. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord just, just come in this place and uh, just ministered to, uh, to the hearts and minds of the people. And uh, this was the song uh, that was sung Wednesday night. And I wanted to, uh, I asked Zoe if she would sing it again. And Roger would play it again for some of you that, that uh, have missed it. So uh, let the Lord bless your heart. Jesus. Amen. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our children can be dismissed now. I want them to go back with Candy and Kim. Praise the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, and I hope that you do, I would ask you to turn into the Old Covenant book of Joshua. Joshua chapter number 13. Before we read the text this morning, I want to say to, to us all this morning, I want to remind myself and say to God's people this morning that what Jesus in his person and Jesus in his vicarious death on the cross, what it provides, what it provides for not only the lost, but the believer alike, is far greater and, and far more, if I can find the right words, than we would ever begin to understand. What Christ has opened up to humanity is something that, that is, that is un it is unthought by the human mind. But with a spiritual mind and a spiritual eye, there is much to be had in Christ. And I want to talk to you this morning concerning the more that you can have and that, that I can have in Christ. In Joshua chapter number 13, uh, verse number 1. I will just read this one verse, but I want to go forward a little bit. Uh, and if the Lord will help me, uh, we, we can get something from God's word. Now, Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, thou art old and stricken in years. And there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. I want, you to, I want you to grab hold of that this morning with your minds and with your heart. Joshua was old and stricken in years, and the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years, and there remaineth yet. Notice the word yet, and then it says very much. Very much land to be possessed. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this word. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, Lord, during this time that's unlike any other time in this history of this world. Lord, may we understand, Lord, that you are still in control, that things are not over, the things are not done, certainly not you and your finished work. Lord, let us see and let us be able to grasp the unveiling, Lord, of this great promise, Lord, that you have given us. Lord, you know, Lord, how bad I need your help. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will hide me, Lord, in the shadow of your everlasting cross. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing and honoring God's word. Uh, just the other morning, I was walking through the house, uh, meditating on the things of the Lord. And I often do that. I, you know, Liz will be getting ready in the morning and uh, doing her routine. And uh, as we are stirring about in the house, I, uh, I'll walk around and use that time to meditate upon the Lord. And the things that are going on in our world today, I was thinking about uh, and I've said it over and over again in the pulpit, and I'll say it again, but we're, we're living in a time in history. You and I are witnessing a time in history that not many people will see in generations. 
And uh, the, as I was walking and meditating in the house, the Lord spoke to me and said these words. He spoke to me in an audible voice that I heard. And I, I will say this before I proceed. There are times that the Lord gives me a sermon. And then there are times the Lord gives me a word. And this past week, the Lord gave me a word, not only for myself, but for you. The Lord spoke to me these words. There remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. Now, I know some of you may not believe this, but as the Lord spoke to me, I immediately walked into my study and picked up his word and proceeded to find the book of Joshua because I wanted to I wanted to follow the leading of the spirit. Well, when I picked up this book, this book was closed. I opened it up. It was not marked. There was no bookmark there. As a matter of fact, this is a new Bible because my other Bible, the bindings coming apart. I opened the book and it fell to Joshua chapter 13 verse 1. I did not turn a page. I did not seek to find where it was God and I knew God had a word for me. And God had a word for us. And I want to speak to you this morning on a few, for a few moments on the subject of lands yet unconquered. Now, the Lord wants you and I to know this morning that there are lands that have not been conquered for the Lord. There remains yet very much land to be possessed. There are lands that the church has not allowed God to conquer. There's not only land that the church has not allowed the Lord to conquer, but there are lands and territories in the lives of God's people that we as children of God, there are things in our lives that we have not allowed God to conquer. The Bible says in the text, the word here for Joshua says, yes, you are old and well stricken in years. I believe Joshua was 101 during this time. But the Lord told Joshua, yet there is very much land to be possessed. And as I was thinking about that, I, I began to think and to, to take my mind back. God had promised Abraham in Genesis chapter 15 concerning the land. And the land I'm speaking of here in the Bible is the land of promise. The land of promise, the land God described as flowing with milk and honey. This land, when it comes to God's people, is this land here, this physical land, is indicative to a spiritual land that God has given you and I. And we'll see here in just a few moments that God's people, they had went so far, but they stopped short. God had said this to Abraham. Genesis 15, in the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Joshua, the great companion of Moses, leading the children of Israel to the promised land. From the time when Joshua, we'll remember when Joshua and Caleb were sent to spy out the land. One of my favorite stories. From the time of the wilderness journeys and across Jordan up until now. I remember, you remember the time when Moses sent the two spies into Kadesh Barnea. One's name was Joshua. One's name was Caleb. Moses sent a man from each of the 12 tribes of Israel to go spy out the land. We remember the story. The spies came back. 
All of the other ten, the ten tribes, they said, we can't possess it. The Amalekites are in the land. They are giants. We'll never be able to take it. You know, that's what Satan wants to tell you and me. He wants to tell you and me this concerning our children and our grandchildren. He wants you and I to know this concerning things that may be in our hearts that we can never, we could never with our own strength get rid of. There are things in even the people of God, there are things in my heart that I know God, I have not allowed God, Brother Dale, to conquer in my life. In other words, there's territory. There's different, there's different areas. There's territory. Now, hey, God's brought me a long way. I'm, I was thinking the other day, and some of you can, you can, you can agree with this. I can't see nothing without these glasses. If I open my Bible, it's a blur. I mean, time has time has has crept up on me. And there's things, there's great things that God has done in my life and great things and enemies that He's conquered and territories in my life that, that I've allowed Him through His grace and mercy. But there's still much more land. There's still much more. There's much more that God wants for His church. That old saying, you can have as, as much of God as you want. You might say, well, Brother Jeff, I'm fine. I'm fine right where I am. That was, that was the attitude of the children of Israel here. First of all, they said they couldn't take the land. Let me get back. Joshua and Caleb, they, the, the ten said, we'll never, ta- we'll never take it. The giants are there. And because God said it, Joshua and Caleb said, it's a good land. It's a good land. You know what he said about the Amalekites? He said, they'll be bread for us. Let us take the land. The children of Israel, the children of Israel picked up rocks. They were going to stone Moses, Aaron, Joshua, and Caleb. And you know what God said? I'll just kill them. One of the greatest, the greatest things that God hates is the sin of unbelief. God is looking for a people that will believe Him for what He says, and He is who He says He is, and He'll do what He says He'll do. The Bible says that Joshua and Caleb rent their clothes. That was a sign of humility, and they began to cry out to God. And Moses, they began to cry out to God. And Moses said, God, please don't kill them. Please don't kill them. Him and Aaron, they interceded for the people. And Joshua and Caleb. The people said, the people said, they're so, the enemy's so large, they look like grasshoppers. This is, this is what Satan wants you and I to think. This is the attitude that he wants you and I to have, especially during the day that we're living in now. The church has been closed. We're having to do some things different. We, we're really not sure that we're living in a very, very uncertain time. All of the political unrest the racial division, all of this stuff. It's a very, very unsure time. Satan would have you and me to turn back. You'll never never conquer this. You'll You'll never be able to possess this land. Oh, my friend. When, when, when God promised the land to Abram, whose name would be changed to Abraham. When God promised him this piece of property, 
It was signed, sealed, and delivered. And the Muslims, they might as well forget it. They can pout and tout, but there has been a title deed written for a piece of land, the great land of Israel. From the river of Egypt to the great river Euphrates, all of the land, not part of it, not just the West Bank, not just this annexation or that annexation, uh -uh. it's all of it. It's the same thing, my friend, in the spiritual realm. The cross of Christ is your title deed, amen, is your title deed to the land that's not yet possessed. This, 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 this person and this, this great, it, it has opened up. It, 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 it's the land flowing with milk and honey. But you got to go get it. You got to possess it, Michael, by faith. God says, there it is. So whatever it is in your life that God needs to possess, let him have it. Let's notice, notice what the word of God says. Praise Praise the name of the Lord. Well, there goes the notes. Let's start at the beginning and just see what God says. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. I want us to... First of all, I want us to see the word in verse, war, in verse 1, the word Lord, with a capital L. Whenever you see this, whenever we see this in God's word, this is referring, Brother George, to the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ. So this is Jesus talking. Jesus Christ, the captain of Joshua's salvation. We have a leader, friend. We have a leader, and his name is Jesus Christ. And wherever it is that God will have you and I to go, he's already there. We're not following some fable. We're following the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The Lord told Joshua, there's yet very much, very much land to be possessed. I love this. The Lord spoke to my heart in verse 2. He said, this is the land that yet remaineth. Think about that with me a moment. Could it be that the Lord wants to speak to the church's heart? Could it be that the, the Lord wants to speak to my heart? And Brother Roger, maybe the Lord would say, Jeff, I got some property that you have not possessed. The enemy, the enemy still has it. I've given this to you, but, well, Lord, I'm, I'm doing everything I need to do. You know how much I love you. We say that so flippantly at times. Maybe it would be to our advantage to say, Lord, show me. Show me the land that you want for me. What is it, Lord, in my life that I have not given up? What is it that I'm holding on to that I've not turned over to you? What, where is, what is it? Where is it? How is it? Let me see it, oh Lord. That's my prayer today. That's my prayer today. I'm, I'm, I'm still amazed at the opportunity that the church has during this time. It's the most, one of the most probably significant evangelistic Ages 
that the world has ever seen, especially in your and my lifetime. Maybe God would say, this is the land. Now I want to read, read down just a little while, and I know some of these names and some of these words are difficult for me to pronounce. But just, just roll with the narrative with me for just a moment. This is the land that yet remaineth. All of the borders of the Philistines and all Geshuri. Now, now the Lord is pointing this out to Joshua. He's pointing it out. He's, he, he's, he, as a matter of fact, there has done been some of the land divvied out to some of the tribes of Israel. But the Lord's wanting to show Joshua some things. He's wanting to show, he's wanting to show him that there is some land. And he is being specific in showing Joshua the land that has not yet been conquered. What I, want you, I, I don't want you to miss this. We have a heavenly Joshua. We have the children of Israel follow Joshua. Matter of fact, the, the Lord put Joshua in charge. Moses, remember, Moses, my servant, is dead. The mantle passed on to Joshua. Moses being a type of the law. Jesus Christ being grace. The law is dead. The law is fulfilled. So now I have a new captain. My captain is my heavenly Joshua. And I am to follow him in the way that I should go. I am to follow him and wherever he leads, I'll go. How many times have you sung it? The Lord wants to show us. He wants to show us. And again, I'm drawn, I'm drawn back to the cross. There is, there's, there's personal ground. There's personal ground that God wants to show me, that the Lord wants to show me that Satan has tried to bind up and take and the Philistines are there and the Amalekites are there and the Gershites are there and the Hittites and the Jebusites and all, they're all there and, and I just don't know if I can take it, Lord. Notice what he says. Verse 3, from Sehor, which is before Egypt, even to the borders of Ekron, northward, which is counted to the Canaanites. Five lords of the Philistines, and the Gazathites, and the Ashdathites, and the Eshkelonites, the Gittites, and the Ekronites, also the Avites, and all of them Ites. You know... I'm a, I'm a Christian. I claim to be a Christian. And I have total confidence that the cross, that my faith in Jesus Christ and His finished work, I have total confidence that this finished work and who He is, I have no problem with taking and grabbing on the part of the heavenly Canaan. There, there's the land flowing with milk and honey, or as some may want to, want to put it as Beulah land. I'm looking now across the river to where my faith. But see, here's what God wants us to see. There is some earthly ground that God wants to take. There is some fleshly ground he wants to take your jealousy. He wants to take jealousy, this land that, it, that is like a Philistine, that is, that is a giant in your life. This giant that has 11 fingers and 11 toes. He's too high. He's too tall. I'll never be able to deal with it. Our heavenly Joshua is saying, let's go. Let's go. Let's go where the milk and honey flow. With a bounded heart, I'm going to make a start. All aboard. Hurry up, let's go. I don't know. I, uh, Satan, Satan desires to kick the church during this age 
Satan desires to kick the church back in the corner. Get over there where you belong. Get over there and shut up. That's what Satan wants to tell the church. Hallelujah, glory to God, saints. We ain't come this far for nothing. We hadn't come this far for nothing. There's much more land. There's much more land to be possessed. The gates of hell, hallelujah, he said, upon this rock, upon this rock, upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. We're on a journey. Y'all, we're on a journey. Satan, he has this thing he wants to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to put God's people in, and wrap us up in fear. Wrap us up and we, we don't understand. We don't, we don't really know what's going on. If there was one people, Lord help us. If there was one people on this planet that ought to know what's going on, it's God's people. If there was one group of people on the planet that ought to know what thus saith the Lord and know what's going on, it ought to be God's people. There's very, there's another little old piece of property too. The greatest, the greatest piece of ground, as again our reference to it, is the ground of unbelief. Some of you, you're just going so far. You get to this place, whoop, I ain't going over there. That's for them kind of people. Oh, hallelujah, let me in it, let me in it, let me in it. I want every square inch, every square inch of the ground. Some of you'd sue your neighbor in a heartbeat if they built a fence one foot on your land. You'd have them in court before the sun went down. Get off of my land! But you won't claim what God has for you. You won't take, we won't take what God has. God wants to do great things. Great things in the life of his people. God wants to do things in our life that, hey, he wants to, he wants to rip some of that stuff out of Jeff. He wants to reach down in Jeff's heart and, and rip it out and give Jeff some new land. He wants to rip that Gurgisite out. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 4, let's, let's continue. From the south, all of the land of the Canaanites and Merah, that is beside the Sidonians, unto Aphek and to the borders of the Amorites. And I know this is, uh, this is map talk. But what I, as I would read to you and as I would have you to go along, God... The Lord Jesus Christ is pointing out here, 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 here. That's what he, he's pointing it out. There's this land. Lord, have mercy. God, please conquer me. Please conquer me. Take me off of my throne. Pull me off of my throne. And allow me to set you in your rightful place. Set you in your rightful place. That I may enjoy. That I may enjoy the spoils. See, there was a spoil that come along with this fight. When he defeated death, hell, and the grave, there's a spoil. All of the children of Israel, they would go in. The first fight, when the children of Israel crossed Jordan, their first, who knows the first fight when they crossed Jordan? Joshua. Who knows what, the, what they faced? That great big wall. 
Jericho. Faith. 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 They marched. They marched. They marched. They marched. Boy, it, it, I hear Miss Doris say one time we ought to have a, we ought to have a Jericho march. <laughs> That's what she means, church. That's what she's talking about. It's the, it's the Jericho, but after the walls fell, the children of Israel, Brother Jeff, they went in and took the spoil. They brought the spoil to God's house. When God, when God conquers something in your life or my life or territory, when he gains, there's spoil there. And the spoil is laid at the foot of the cross to give him honor and glory. Verse 4, from the south, all the land of the Canaanites, Merak, that is beside the Sidonians and Aphek, and to the borders of the Amorites and the land of the Gibeonites, and all Lebanon toward the sun rising, from Baal Gad under Mount Hermon unto the entering of Hamath. All the inhabitants of the hill country from Lebanon unto that word. <laughs> and all the Sidonians, them, notice what he says. All them I will drive out before the children of Israel. That's very key in this story. You and I are dealing with things in our life that we can't deal with. We're attempting. We're attempting. There are Christians. Christians. I'm not talking about specifically here. All over this world, all over, that are sitting on pews. They're sitting on pews that they've come so far with the Lord and there's this enemy did you know and I have to go to it at extremes sometimes to I think to make my point there are men of God let's go to the extreme there are men of God that are standing behind pulpits that love God, yet they're struggling. They're struggling. They're struggling. They, they, they're trying to do right. They're trying to, they're trying to stand before and they're trying to, they're trying to, to, to put on the, the facade. They're trying to maintain the image. Yet there's a Philistine in their life. There's an Amalekite. Some of them are big. So, what do you mean, preacher? What are you saying? Listen. Satan don't have no favorites. They're men of God. Men sitting in pews. You need to get this. There are men that are struggling with pornography. How is it, Jeff, that a man could stand here on Sunday and on his computer at midnight on Monday? It's because he's trying to fight it on his own guys. He's trying to fight it. He may love God with all his heart his soul and his mind, but he's trying to fight it with his own willpower. I know some of you don't believe it, but this happens. Some of you would think, oh, he's not saved anyway. You're a fool. Talk it over with David. Talk it over with Jonah. Talk it over. Talk it over. There, God wants to help some people. That's why people quit, Sid. That's why young babes in Christ, they give up. They, hey, 
and the, and the church folks, I've done got my land, you get yours. Oh, it stinks in his nostrils. It stinks. There's a stench of self-righteousness that is, in, that is in the people, in the minds and hearts of the people today. That's why the, that's why the church is weak. Isaiah called it putrefying sores. That's, why, that's what's going on. Hey, maybe, I, maybe I'm just a little bit overboard. Our streets, our streets are being taken over. The front glass of our supermarkets are being caved in. There is a virus that in this land that's called a pandemic. And God's people were, are we? The Amalekites has got us scared. The Philistines has got us scared. Joshua. Joshua. Joshua saying, hey. I know I'm old. I know I've been, I've been, I've went a lot of ground. There's been a lot of, lot, I've, hey, I've seen it all. But there's much more land to be possessed. I want to say this to you. If you're, if you are struggling with something in your heart, Maybe it's, and I always, sometimes I go to those really, really extreme things to get your attention. But maybe you're struggling with unforgiveness in your life. Maybe, you know, there, there's this one thing. Maybe there's this one thing that you cannot get over. Maybe somebody's hurt you. Maybe it is a, a trust thing. You'll never trust anybody again. You're going to go this far with God. I'm not going over there. But what God wants you to know is there's fresh manna over here. There's fresh milk. There's fresh honey. If, if what we're looking at, we're almost done. If what we're looking at this morning is a mere history lesson, of Old Testament jargon, and it really does not have any spiritual connotation at all, let's rip it out and do away with it. The words of God are pure, and they're true. They're true. Words of God are true, and they all carry significance. Every, every one of those Hittites and Termites, whatever you want to call them. Every one of them has a, has a spiritual connotation to it. There's something in your life this morning. I guarantee you they are because there's stuff in my life. You ain't no different from me. We ain't no different. We might think we are. We might put on a pretend, pretend that we are. We're not different. We all, we all serve the same Lord, but we all fight the same devil. And we all fight the same flesh. Praise the Lord. Notice what it says. It says, I will drive out from before the children of Israel. Only divide thou it by lot unto the Israelites for an inheritance that I have commanded thee. Now therefore divide this land for an inheritance unto the nine tribes and the half tribe of Manasseh. Now I want to, I want to just expound on that a second. Is your inheritance, now, now please just give me five more minutes and I'm going to let you go. What, if somebody was to say, Brother Jeff, what is your inheritance? Christianity wise. I'm not talking about your mom and daddy stuff. I'm talking about what is your spiritual inheritance? What has 
God given you? Or what has Christ afforded you in your life? What is your inheritance? What has been meted out to you through the cross? What has been given unto you? Well, I'm going to heaven when I die. But life on earth is pure to hell. There's more. There's more. There's more. Now there's a point. Verse 8. With whom the Reubenites and the Gadites have received their inheritance, which Moses gave them beyond Jordan eastward, even as Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave them. That's another story. There was... How many of you know, know that there was two tribes in the children of Israel that they didn't even cross Jordan? They stayed on the other side of Jordan. They said, this is all we want. They never got to see. Woo! They never got to see the Jordan part. They never... Because they didn't want it. They never saw the Jordan part. They never saw Jericho's walls fall. They never saw it. They never saw it. That's what God was talking about there. They had received their inheritance. From Aor, verse 9, that is upon the bank of the river Arnon and the city that is in the midst of the river all into the plain of Mediba and Dibon. And all the cities of Sion, king of the Amorites, which reigned in Hishbon unto the border. All of these kings and all of these cities and all of these huge armies, all of these huge kingdoms, one by one, one step at a time, God would go in as the children of Israel would follow them by faith and, God, and they would take more land, more land, more land, more land and they would keep going and keep going and keep going. Verse 11, and Gilead and the border of the Gershurites and the Machathites and all Mount Hermon and all Bashan under Salca. Verse 12 and 13, I'm going to stop. All the kingdom of Og in Bashan, which reigned under Ashtaroth and Edra, who remained of the remnant of the giants, for these did Moses smite and cast them out. And I want to stop with verse 13, nevertheless. Nevertheless, there's always going to be those that doubt. And there's always going to be a nevertheless. I don't want to be in verse 13. Don't count me in verse 13, Lord. Uh -uh. Lord, give me, some, give me some good old fashioned, give me some old fashioned Holy Ghost grit in the day that I live. Give, give me, Lord, what I need to follow you. I don't want to be counted in this verse. Nevertheless, the children of Israel expel not the Gershurites, nor the Machthalites, but the Mesherites and the Machthalites, excuse me for the pronunciation, but notice what it says, dwell among the Israelites until this day. All they had to do was believe. The Lord said, I will fight for you. They didn't have to do it on their own, Brother Jeff. And that's the point. There's no enemy that will ever be driven out by our own willpower or our own self. But if you have something in your life, if we'll put our trust in Him, He'll drive it out. Would you stand? Praise the Lord. I'll ask our musicians to come back. And I, I know that There's things in my own life, church, I'll be honest with you, there's things in my own life that I've not, that I've not yet allowed the Lord to conquer. There's things that I, that I deal with and fight with on a constant basis. You know, as we think about, and, and it's, it's faith, you know, I, I, 
I, I struggle, and I, I'm, a, I'm a faith in the cross preacher, but I, I'll be honest with you, there's times I struggle when I, when I look at my children and I look at different things and I struggle, will it, will it ever, will it ever, will it ever change, will it ever, will things ever change? And the Lord is speaking to me this morning and He's telling me, you've got to let me have this land, boy. You've got to give it up. You've got to let me take this Philistine out. You've got to let me take this spirit of doubt out of your mind, out of your heart, for there is much more land to be gained. That's how God's people, that's what we're, that's what we're called on to do. Some of you, some of, some of you and me, some of us, some of us, think if, it, if we're not careful we're going to think that the deal with our children is hopeless they're too hard headed they won't, they'll never listen they'll never do what's right they'll never this, they'll never that they'll never this nor never that friend Joshua is telling you there's much more land to be possessed He's telling me, Jeff, you just stand out of the way. You keep marching. You follow me. Follow the blood-stained banner. And I'm going to take you into a land that you've never dreamed of before. Last but not least, some folks think that Christianity is balled up into It's balled up into a certain religiosity. In other words, as long as I do this, I do this, I do this, I do this, I am this. Well, there's much more land that you're not going to be able to experience. It would, it would do the church good. It would do the church good to say, God, if there's more land, give it to us. If there's more territory, give it to us. If there's more of your spirit, give it to us. The Lord wants to dump out. He wants to dump out His blessings. But we got to let Him drive out before He can dump out. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to open these altars for just a moment this morning. And I know sometimes I preach like it's the last sermon we'll ever hear, but sometimes it might be. One of these days you'll hear it for the last time. One of these days you'll you'll come to God's house the last time. Praise the Lord. Would you come talk to Him this morning? Maybe you need prayer. I'd be glad to pray with you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hey, praise the Lord. The song says, just as I am. <clears throat> That's all the Lord wants anyway. You, can't, you, ain't, you and me, ain't, we don't have nothing to drive that enemy out. We just come just as we are. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise His holy name. It's a great thing that Jesus has done for us, church. It's a great thing. Praise His holy name. I hate to say this, but it's true. There are going to be some of you going to walk right back out that door. And that Philistine and that Amalekite, they're going to still remain in control. They're going to rob you, rob you of your inheritance. 
because you won't give in. It's time for God's church to give in. It's time for God's church to give in. It's time for God's church to get real with God. And it's time for us to get real with each other. Quit worrying about the paint on the wall. That kind of junk has robbed the church long enough. Praise His name. Praise the Lord. Praise His name. Praise the Lord. Praise His name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise His name. One last thing. One last thing. Church, there's healing in this atonement. There's healing. He paid for it. By His stripes. There's healing in this atonement. But there's this Amalekite called doubt. God don't do that stuff no more. All that stuff stopped when the apostles died. I'm going to tell you something. I don't believe my Lord would be that kind of Lord. I don't believe my Lord would give one bunch something and hold it from another. There's healing in the atonement. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank You for Your mercy and Your grace. Lord, we acknowledge a living Joshua this morning. We acknowledge You this morning. Lord, I know that there's still much land to be claimed in my life. Still much land that's not been conquered. Lord, I pray, Lord, that You will you'll come in and do a work in my life. Lord, I pray for each family, Lord, that's represented here today. Lord, let, our, let us leave today with our faith awoken and our faith enlightened. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Jesus. Lord, bless Your people. Bring us back at the next time. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you for your kind attention. Those of you that want to, Brother Jamie Ellis will be preaching for us tonight. Come back at 6. <clears throat> Praise the Lord.